Hi, welcome to the second video in this free creativity mindset mini series of videos. So let me ask you, have you ever been sabotaged by a little voice in your head halfway through some of your best creative work? And have you ever wished that you could take that voice and kind of lock it away in a room so that you can just get on with the act of creating without being disturbed? So what is that voice, how did it get in there, and, and what can we do about it? So that voice I call your inner critic, or is called your inner critic, it comes by many other names. It can be called mind friction, psychobabble, um, the angel and the devil on your shoulders, good cop, bad cop. Cognitive dissonance is not one of them, but that's a cool term. And what are some of the things that it says to you? So, one of the things it might say is, oh, hey, uh, you know how you're going to do that painting. Well, uh, I probably wouldn't bother because um, you're nowhere near as good as Picasso. You probably won't be in the near future. So, oh, I probably just wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Um, I'd advise you to sit down on the couch and eat barbecue shapes. That's what I'd do. Or it might say, um, oh yeah, I know you're having a great time writing this song, but your parents don't really approve of you being an artist, and um, it could it could ruffle a few feathers. It's probably better if you get a, a little 9 to 5 job and turn into a robot, because that's what your parents want. Which is not actually true. If your parents care about you, all they want is for you to be happy. So, so your inner critic, I like to call it your insecure critic. Let's just think about what a critic is for a moment. So a critic is someone who is great at kicking back and telling other people how they should do something without actually being able to do that thing themselves. A critic would love to do what you do, but for some reason they've not built up the courage which you have loads of, to pick up an instrument or a camera or a brush and start to express themselves in the world. Because that takes courage. Your inner critic is exactly the same. Your inner critic has no authority over the things that you are doing. Your inner critic has somehow convinced itself and has convinced you that it has some legitimacy in your head. And that what it tells you are, are you know, good bits of advice. Couldn't be further from the truth. I can tell you that 99% of what your inner critic tells you are lies. Based on fear and insecurity. There are three things I can offer to you right now that will help you start dealing with your inner critic. The first one is, don't believe a word that it says. So you get to choose uh, what you believe and what you don't believe and your inner critic is not you. It's a part of you but it is not you. So you get to decide. The second thing is that no thought lives in your head rent free. So you can evict your inner critic, you can evict any thought that passes through your mind if you believe it's not supportive. You get to choose that in every single waking moment of your day. The last one is, you must take control and responsibility for your own consciousness as an artist and as a creative person. Once you do that, once you have an awareness, then you have a real chance at controlling and mastering your inner critic. I hope that was helpful. So, in the next video, I'm going to answer this question. Is goal setting important in creativity? Well, great question, Mio. Great question. So if you want to find out more about that, click up here to go on to the next video, and I That's will see right. you there. So goal setting is the same kind of deal in your creative life. So 90% of people don't ever write down their goals, and they're probably the same 90% of people that never achieve those goals. So what I'd encourage you to do, 
This is a very simple two-step process.